Hello and welcome to this design practice 2 module 30. Uh, the course <coughs> this particular module is uh, dedicated to rapid tooling rapid prototyping. In the last few modules we had been extensively looking at CNC uh, programming and processes related to the CNC machine. So, let us look at what is uh, rapid prototyping to begin with. So, rapid prototyping basically is a new manufacturing technique uh, that allows for fast fabrication of computer models. Uh, designated with three dimension computer aided uh, software CAT software. So, the idea is whatever we have done towards the beginning of this course where we have talked about a lot of handling of lot of data related to surfaces or related to uh, you know let us say three dimensional models. The same coordinate data can be really mapped in form of uh, a direct uh, you know manufacturing through this process rapid prototyping. So, this process allows uh, fast realization of ideas particularly it is used more as a modeling tool for the you know prototyping stage of the design. Uh, most of the designers are uh, habituated to uh, visualizing 3D shapes forms etcetera by looking at the rapid prototyping forms because it is easily doable. Um, so, basically uh, the idea here is that through a polymer or through metals you can actually uh, formulate a layer by layer. Uh, manufacturing. So, that any complex topology any complex shape uh, can be reproduced ok and um, you know the uh, ideas into functional prototypes is basically the uh, aspect of design which is uh, covered using these rapid prototyping uh, techniques. So, therefore, because we have functioning prototypes for all the design ideas that you have already uh, discussed and sketched and schematically uh, drawn and you know also made the computer model it typically shortens the design time because a lot of time otherwise is spent in visualization and thinking about what will happen to the final product outlay. So, if you have something in hand where you are actually looking at that um, which is maybe a demo uh, maybe a scale down version, but it just gives you an idea of the whole uh, 3D shape or size or form. So, this uh, really is a step towards successful final products. So, uh, RP today is used in a wide variety of industries uh, from shoemakers to car manufacturers I would say. Uh, this is the level and complexity in which RP is used. Some examples uh, could be for example, uh, can look at this shower head which has been 3D printed using polymer as an extremely complex shape, uh, but you know the, the form of this particular object how convenient it is to hold uh, by a user, what is the extent of uh, water pressure that can be dwelt, how uh, well the water can be split all these things all these aspects are shown by the shower head. This again a 3D print of an automotive manifold uh, just prior to the final designing ok. It is important that you develop this um, intermediate step to look at aspects related to flow uh, and other <laughs> fitment aspects this part gets into an automotive and fits along with the engine. There are other automotive parts where 3D prototyping is used quite a bit you know in order to visualize uh, how the prototype would really look like from design stage to a uh, you know to a prototype stage or a component stage. So, these are some examples of rapid prototyping. If I looked broadly into what are the kind of techniques which are involved in doing this rapid prototyping there are either subtractive techniques where you take out uh, material um, or there are additive techniques where you uh, uh, remove instead of removing the material you add layer by layer and build up the desired design. So, when we talk about traditional uh, tooling and manufacturing processes it is a technique which uh, involves mostly the material removal processes from solid piece of material until the desired design uh, or shape or form is realized. There are many such examples ok one could be uh, traditional milling, turning, drilling, computer numeric control, CNC machines. Uh, you looked at a lot of aspects of CNC in the last few lectures, electric discharge machining, so on, so forth. These are all subtractive techniques, you know, and you can say that if you want to use these processes for, uh, you know, prototyping your design ideas, they could be subtractive techniques for prototyping the design ideas. On the other hand, additive uh, manufacturing or additive machining is probably the new uh, thought in the industry 
uh, principal in principle reasons for uh, thinking uh, your deposition rather than removal is the prevention of wastage which otherwise would be when you are trying to machine an otherwise uh, uh, solid block or shape and removing material uh, as chips. So, that uh, gets eliminated in this case once you are adding on because you can uh, add the deposited amount the desired amount you know uh, rather than extra amount and taking it off. Okay. So, uh, that is one principal reason for uh, going the additive way in the manufacturing domain. So, <laughs> it adds layers of materials one at a time to build the solid part from bottom to top. Uh, the many examples one of them which was uh, widely used in the earlier years and still uh, in the electronics industry is used quite rapidly is the uh, micro nano manufacturing techniques uh, you know used as a micro nano manufacturing technique is the stereolithography. Uh, then you have fused deposition modeling FTM which uses uh, single or two phase polymer systems and uh, the polymers are otherwise fed in as wires. Uh, you know obtained from billets and then uh, they are extruded uh, so that there can be the deposition of the extruded uh, polymer onto a bed uh, using a track which is very well defined through a computer design, a design pr uh, process. So, 3D printing in metals is another uh, area where you know you are talking about additive manufacturing for rapid prototyping or performing rapid, rapid prototyping. Uh, there are several advantages and disadvantages of uh, rapid prototyping as such. Uh, the advantages could be that the fast and inexpensive method of prototyping the design ideas. Um, you could have multiple design iterations and try to creatively visualize it uh, and visualization becomes much easier if you have a model in hand rather than uh, mental form of visualization. And then you have physical validation of the design sometimes, uh, sometimes you are doing reverse engineering and trying to see how the design would come out okay, in terms of the CAD geometry that has been plotted in space. And so, this gives you a quite a bit of you know validation of how a manufacturing uh, method would work on the CAD data. For example, a CNC uh, operation would work on the CAD data. Uh, so, there is an in between step here which is less expensive and does not uh, cater to the complete reprototyping of the, the final form once there is an error. So, then there is reduced product development time again which is another very important advantage for uh, the rapid prototyping techniques. There are several disadvantages also, uh, one of the most uh, important disadvantages is the resolution, uh, it is not as fine as the traditional machining process, uh, you know traditional machining typically goes to millimeters or even sub millimeter domain resolution, rapid prototyping may not be able to give this much kind of a surface finish, but there is a way out you can um, think of a hybrid strategy where you uh, add and remove and that may lead to a reasonable amount of uh, surface finishing. Some of the tools like electrochemical machining and electro deposition used in uh, synergism used in uh, with some synergy would be able to realize as fine surfaces as about 100, micro, 100 nanometers plus minus average roughness values as pointed out in the literature many times. So, surface flatness is inappropriate when you talk about RP techniques uh, obviously dependent on the material and the way it flows or extrudes uh, and uh, there may not be much control unless you use another strategy of uh, subtractively also uh, machining as well as adding. So, uh, that the final formulation of the roughness can happen. So, what are some of the starting materials uh, in the uh, rapid prototyping domain? Obviously, the first material that would come to view is wax which is easily meltable, flowable, uh, it is easy to machine, you know it can be resolidified quickly, it can be melted quickly and uh, in fact, there are desktop CNC machines which would actually build models using wax uh, which was one of the first generation RP tools uh, that started within the industry. Then there are uh, polymers which are mostly uh, very widely used particularly solid polymers uh, which are formulated through curing layer by layer of liquid monomers. Uh, then there are powders that are aggregated and bonded layer by layer this process is also known as the 
selective laser sintering process, SLS process. There can be solid sheets that are laminated to create solid parts uh, together. The only uh, catch here is the layer by layer construction of uh, a certain shape or form or size that has been designed through the, the, the CAD interface. There are some additional methods uh, in, additional, uh, in addition to starting material, the various uh, material addition RP technologies use different methods to build and add layers to create solid parts. And uh, there is a correlation between the starting material and the part building techniques, uh, which leads to the realization of the final rapid prototyped product. So, how do we classify the different RP technologies which exist? So, you can have uh, one form of classification based on the starting material. For example, there could be liquid based uh, 3D printing process, which when cured layer by layer into solid polymers develop the solid shape or form or size of the final 3D product. There can be solid based materials, particularly laminates, which are bonded to each other to create the solid parts. And it could be powder based, where it is still solid, but then granules and these granules can be sintered to each other very uh, in a focused manner using laser and other uh, you know light forms and these aggregated and bonded layers uh, can be <coughs> again built up layer in a layer by layer manner so that the final 3D shape or form can be realized. So, these are some of the classifications of um, RP uh, tools based on the starting materials. We will go into the details of each of these probably looking into some of the aspects associated with uh, stereolithography, which is actually a liquid based um, 3D printing process, you know FDM, which is again based on uh, a solid extruded polymer and then powder based, which is again uh, based on lasing action and sintering action. So, uh, I think I will close this particular module, because um, this was a shorter module to uh, plug the gap, which was created in the last week's uh, lectures of about 10 minutes or so. So, in the next module, we will start some of the detailed discussion about these individual techniques. As of now, thank you very much.